Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, and um, today is a very sad day for us because we lost our dear friend and Space Command star uh, Mira Furlan last night, and uh, I just wanted to share some remembrances of her, and uh, uh, and we'll be doing a lot more to remember her in the near future, uh, perhaps something with all of our cast uh, talking about her and things like that, but for now I just wanted to share some thoughts and maybe share with you a scene that we uh, recently did with her. So um, for several months I'd known she was ill. I talked to her husband, Garand. It was crazy because it was West Nile virus of all things from a mosquito bite here in Los Angeles. She lived up in the Hollywood Hills and uh, you know, craziness, to uh, insanity. But um, uh, you know, so she was very ill and I was waiting, I was holding off on uh, doing the uh, table read, the Zoom table read of Sweet Haven because we were hoping she would recover because she was playing a role in that as well, um, Bob Carter's wife in that project. And uh, um, we were very thrilled at the prospect of the two of them playing husband and wife, but uh, sadly we won't get to see that uh, that great performance. But but I'll share with you sort of uh, some of the my memories of Mira and um, she was a phenomenal actress and a wonderful person. And uh, it really came across in her performances. So, um, so basically here's some of it. I, I first met Mira when I was writing for Babylon 5, and I recall seeing her performance as Delenn and just thinking she was spectacular and so um, individual and different. And uh, I just I just loved it from the first. And um, the there was a rap party for season one of Babylon 5, and it was held at a bowling alley. And I remember her sitting there, and I went up to her and I just introduced myself, and I said, I just think you're terrific, and uh, I very much want to work with you again. And uh, it was, of course, you know, several decades later that I came up with Space Command, and she was always on my first list of who I wanted to be in the cast. And very early on, I uh, I took her to lunch, and I said, I don't know yet much about your role, but um, I know that she'll be a xenoarchaeologist, that she'll be, um, uh, you know, uh, that she'll have a fiery but loving relationship with her daughter, and that... She, um, she won't be uh, defined by a man. And she said, I'm in. <laughs> and, and, and then I started building the relationship. And I'd met a young actress named Yelena Mergia, and, uh, and she spoke Serbo-Croatian, as did Mira, and I thought it'd be great to have them play mother and daughter and speak in that language when speaking to each other and speaking English to others and so forth. And it worked out just wonderfully. And um, Mira was always uh, just so committed and writing with her in mind was such a joy because she was so distinctive. Uh, there was such a fierce quality of personality and intelligence and heart that uh, it was just a joy. Every every line, every word I ever wrote for her was a joy. And she was totally collaborative and totally there uh, for the work and not uh, never a problem, never any anything but just a, a sheer joy to work with. And, and it was very fun to reunite her with Bill Mummy and Bruce Boxleitner in Space Command because, you know, they hadn't acted together since uh, Babylon 5. And so that was just um, so gratifying. And uh, and she just was just fit right in with Doug Jones and Bob Picardo and all of our other actors and never, never acting like the star, always being friendly, always being just a, a really genuine human being. And Elaine and I had many lunches with her where we would just talk and catch up. And, and that was always so... Uh, just wonderful and and just uh, she and Elaine both were very fiercely political and and Mira of course had sur survived the, uh, the, f the the war in the for former Yugoslavia Bosnia and all of that and and she had a um, um, it was a very she had a dreadful time during that 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 period and uh, came to America um, uh, to act and she, she, she she'd been a movie star in, in in the former Yugoslavia she was very very famous and very esteemed and uh, but I remember that when we started shooting Space Command, it was just, I mean, just whether we were in like some spaceship crashing or 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 a people mover or just and she was really able to just be that person. And the person was based on her. It was very much, you know, in her character and in her voice. And when I wrote Sweet Haven, when I was creating Sweet Haven with Rock Neil Bannon, again, she was first on my list. And and when I wrote the character that she was going to play with Bob Picardo, um, you know I, I, that it, you know I knew uh, that she would be have come from that that past of 
of being in, in Bosnia. And so I wrote about that in that, uh, in that character. And when I sent her the script, uh, she, uh, she was very thrilled with it. And, and Bob too, of course, Bob Picardo, and the idea of them playing husband and wife was thrilling to me. And, you know, we were gonna have the Zoom table read of that, of that pilot. Um, and I put it off for several months when I learned she was ill, you know, with West Nile virus. And, uh, you know, we kept hoping she'd pull through. And even the framing story in the next Space Command episode that we've been um, shooting and prepping for had a framing story with her character. She was going to have a major, major plot line through through the first season and beyond. And now we'll be revising that because, again, I don't want to continue her character with, um, you know, I would never think of recasting it. And, and I want to just kind of retire that character with, with what we shot of her. But fortunately, you know, beyond the first two hours of Space Command, which she's terrific in, uh, we've released the first hour on Mr. Sci-Fi and we're finishing the second hour now in visual effects. In fact, last night I was working on a scene, uh, uh, her final scene in the pilot uh, when, I, when I got the news of her, of her passing. And uh, so that was a just strange thing because even now we're, you know, we're working on her scenes and we're putting in visual effects. And, um, but fortunately, I, I also came up with a prequel that we recorded as an audio play last year before the pandemic, and she was great in that. And we were doing a graphic novel uh, of her storyline as well uh, from that that prequel. So we have an animatic where we're combining the audio and the video. So we're, we're gonna be able to share all this stuff with you. And uh, and then also during the pandemic, when the, in the early months of the pandemic, with all the actors stuck at home, Elaine and I came up with a two hour episode uh, where Mira uh, got to play her character in a scene uh, being interviewed by a BBC reporter, and I'm and I'm so glad that we got we had lunch with her just before the pandemic hit, and and that was a lovely memory and a lovely time. And then, uh, and then she was totally totally game to record the the scene uh, in Ripple Effect, and that was you know a two hour episode of Space Command with the actors shooting their own scenes in their own homes, and uh, and we kind of guided her through that, and uh, and then and then linked her with the shots of Michelle. Costa in uh, in the UK and uh, it just worked like gangbusters so you know and she was just and this may have been the last thing she ever shot because that was around April May and uh, and at the end of this this little Mr. Sci-Fi I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share that with you so you can see that scene in its entirety but if you want to see more of Mira Ripple Effect is on Mr. Sci-Fi you can you can watch all of two hours of it you can watch the first hour of our pilot um, for Space Command. You can watch many of the appearances, the panels we did at Comic-Con. Uh, if you just search through Mr. Sci-Fi, you'll find wonderful panels with, with Mira, wonderful uh, other video, um, you know, interviews and so forth. We did a Space Command con convention during the pandemic where on online, and again, her panel uh, appearance was just, just great. And, uh, and you really get a sense of her. I, 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 in, in Space Command, I was very careful to cast actors who had personalities that came across strongly, and a good heart, a, a gentle nature, a, a kind spirit, compassion, um, and 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 I wrote the roles to match, uh, and so Bob Cardo, um, you know, Bill Mummy, Doug Jones, etc., you know, Ethan McDowell, of course, and uh, you know Brian McClure, all these good-hearted souls that are just such a dream to work with, but Mira was. Um, really one of our one of our shining shining stars and i'm so glad that my my most recent memories are are with working with her in this past year because you know if i hadn't thought of the role for uh, for mira in space command it would have been you know 20 years and more since i last worked with her unfortunately it was just a few months and uh you know we're gonna miss her terribly uh though i'm sure that she like like i felt honored and feel honored to be part of an art form where we can share ourselves, the best of ourselves, with the world. And I know Mira did that, and she brought everything she had to her her acting and her life. And she was just, she'd been through terrible times, but was not a defeated soul at all. And um, and she was working on an, uh, on an autobiography. I hope that'll be published now. And, uh, and I'm just, you know, we're gonna miss her terribly. But I'm, but my God, I what a, what an honor to have known her. And uh, one thing I'm going to do, and I can put the word out to all of you, is uh, if you'd like to record a little remembrance of Mira, we're gonna, and send the video to me at markzikri at gmail dot com. Uh, we're going to put together a little remembrance of Mira with her fans. Uh, 
talking about her. So if you'd like to send your own re remembrance of Mira, that'd be great. And, uh, you know, and, uh, and we'll piece them together and, and share them with, with you on, on Mr. Sci-Fi. And so that's about it for now. Um, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, very sad, but, but also very grateful. And, uh, and so now um, we'll share with you this, the last scene we did of Mira in her role as Dr. Von Odara. It was shot just, la just a few months ago. And, um, and wherever Mira is now, God bless her. And, uh, and, and thank you, Mira, for all, all you brought to my life. Dr. Von Odara is the leading Zeno archaeologist in the system. Her discovery of artifacts of an ancient alien race, the Yamar, is the scientific find of the century. Dr. Odara, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I almost forgot. My apologies. Uh, I know I promised you an interview. I was celebrating. My daughter just had a baby. Thank you, Dr. Odara. We do appreciate you leaving your party. So, questions? The Amar? What can you tell us about them? Oh, yes. Beyond hoping they still exist in some, some distance somewhere. Get beautiful cities and a vast sense of community. By which you mean? They embraced everyone, like every individual of goodwill. It sounds wonderful. Would you say there was any single key lesson that they had to share with us? Community is the lesson for every sentient being, any sentient being uh, who may live one year or hundreds, giving to community creates a stream that's endless. It gifts us with immortality. And what would you say you have to give? <sighs> I would say um, a passionate curiosity. There's never been a door I haven't wanted to open. And there's never been a door I regretted having opened. <laughs> My daughter is uh, different. She has always been much more cautious. And, and, and now that she's had a child, I think it's a good thing. But I, uh, I was born under a shadow Knowing that possibly I wouldn't live long, I, uh, I decided to have every adventure I could possibly have. To embrace the whole universe. And now that I have reached a little bit more mature age, um, I don't see any reason to change. But in light of that, it's all very well if the life you encounter out there is friendly. But what if it turns out to be hostile, even predatory? Mm, I would... Uh, I would endeavor to change their minds. And if I failed... I would try to endure. And to hold on to my best self.